My name is Scott Chaloner and you are listening to the Leaders' Council podcast for the people who run the country and the people who keep the country running. As our regular listeners will know very well, part of our mission here at the Leaders' Council is to bring you a variety of distinct perspectives on leadership. And to this end, we're joined on today's programme by James Puttick, the Managing Director of Direct Healthcare Solutions, or what was once known as Direct Healthcare Solutions, since the company is going through a rebrand and is now known as eCura. Um, James, a very warm welcome to yourself. And by all means, thank you for joining us on the programme. It's a real pleasure having Having you. Thanks, Scott. Yeah, thanks for having, having me. Now, um, obviously, James, um, I've uh, mentioned the fact that your company has just undergone that uh, rebrand there, but I've very, very deliberately kind of left it open ended as to what it is that what was Direct Healthcare Solutions, now eCura, actually does. So, just for those uh, listeners that are tuning in that might not be familiar with you, in your own words, what is it that you um, specialize in, as it were? We, um, so, we provide a wide range of quality health care care products, uh, including movement and handling products, bathing and hygiene, um, so ceiling hoists, high adjustable bathroom equipment, um, all types of equipment to specially adapt um, people's homes. Um, we also work with care homes and schools, hospitals, um, to provide that equipment. And we also do the service and, and maintenance and repairs and ongoing uh, aftercare on all those products as well. Yeah, so plenty um, to uh, basically that you're getting your teeth, teeth stuck into there, and plenty of applications uh, with the uh, the products. So you provide across sort of uh, care and uh, the health industries uh, for sure. Um, obviously, with regards to the um, the rebrand, I mean it's an interesting time for it to uh, for it to be happening. And I was just wondering um, what the thought process was behind going with Ecure as a name, and why you felt it was right to go down this road now. Yeah, so I set the company up in uh, 2010, so we've been trading for 12 years now. Um, we kind of felt it was it was the right time for a, uh, a, a refresh, if you like. Um, the business has moved on a lot since the early days, and um, it, we were just taking some customer feedback. Um, we've, we've had a couple of instances of um, confusion with another brand, so that was part of fed into it mm. but also just generally to give the uh the company a kind of a refresh and a um you know a, a bit of a positive more modern look moving forward um and so yeah we spoke to some of our key customers we spoke to our staff and kind of did some independent research around what people thought of our business and what we offered um and that kind of informed where we went from from you know the old brand to the new brand effectively so would you say that the uh, the new brand is essentially more indicative of how the uh, the business has sort of moved on over the years and kind of helps distinguish it in this new modern landscape from the the competition in that respect? Absolutely, yeah. So um, in just in terms of the naming, um, Cura is uh, Latin for care, um, and we're also pushing the business on um, quite a sustainable footing as well. So we've got the um, e Cura, obviously linking into the eco side of the business as well and mm. um, so that sets us up for the, the kind of the, the naming and that's the, the future direction of the, the, the business um, in terms of um, the feedback we had um, from from clients was that the business and, and us as individuals always um, while the words they use were responsive reliable and grounded were the key words that came out from speaking to um, a group of our key customers um, so we tried to build on that and, and and use it in kind of a personality to the business, if you like, this friendly, innovative um, specialist in the products we do, you know, sustainable, um, trustworthy and respected. So those are the kind of personality um, types that we're trying to pull through with the rebrand as well. Yeah, and it certainly seems indicative of the ethos of the business, even under the old brand, the Direct Healthcare Solutions brand, because um, you were essentially a provider of uh, healthcare products, which was backed up with 
efficient and forward thinking service in what you called an ever changing healthcare landscape. And this is kind of you acknowledging, isn't it, how the healthcare landscape has changed and it's seeing your business adapting with that. And you're talking about being innovative. You're talking about the need for the, en- the, the, for the industry to move on, to be more aware of uh, its, you know, carbon footprint, sustainability, operating in an eco friendly way. And with everything going on in the world at the moment, with uh, the talk of the net zero agenda about energy security as well, I suppose suppose really there's there's sort of no better time for this forward thinking and to sort of roll with the times as it were yeah absolutely so we were um one of the first signatories to the climate pledge one of the early signatories on the climate pledge mm. um which is something that uh, was set up by jeff bezos at amazon um to hit net zero 10 years earlier than the climate paris agreement so we've we, we've signed into that um, and we've also last year um, conducted a full kind of carbon reporting on the business um, for our carbon output for last year. And then that forms our strategy for how we reduce that year on year. Um, and we're able to report that directly to all of our customers now so that they they also have an idea directly of what proportion of our carbon relates to them. Um, so it's just that transparency and the sustainability as well. And obviously with the regards to that strategy i appreciate you might not want to give too much away on that but um are there some key milestones key goals in mind over the next few months and indeed years as you sort of aim to uh sort of adhere to those uh, climate principles yeah absolutely i mean we're, we're we're building that at the moment obviously now we've got the first year's data behind us and we're looking at um we're actually working with suppliers you know looking at how we can get a- accurate as possible data from them um, also looking at what we can do, um, you know, down the chain and, and, and how we can change certain one, certain of our practices, you know, looking at electric vehicles, that type of thing. Um, it needs to be managed, obviously, logistically. Um, <clears throat> changing vehicle fleets and things like that is not something we can do overnight, but those are the types of things we're, we're working towards. And obviously, um, yeah, other things in the background as well. Yeah, certainly. I suppose as well. It's not just obviously how you transport your products, as you've just talked about there with the uh, the vehicle fleet and um, all of that side of thing. But it's also essentially how the uh, the products are manufactured as well, isn't it? And the materials sourced to build them, where they come from, and the carbon footprint that's embedded within those. I mean, when it comes to this sort of thing, there's there is a there is a lot to think about more so than you might uh, than you might initially think. Yeah, absolutely. And we're working actively with with our key suppliers now to, um, you know, really button down that information um so we know exactly where everything's coming from you know proportions of recycled aluminium that are used and um even ways we can you know help them with changing their processes or upgrading their processes to make things more efficient from their end which then helps us you know as the products move down the line to us yeah it's fantastic and it's great as well that that sort of uh that sustainable approach is uh, really reflected in the uh, the new name of the uh, the business and obviously yeah uh, you mentioned there that uh, you know you're trying to distance yourselves uh, from another commercial interest um that sort of had a similar name to the uh, the old brand and that's of course another understandable motivator behind the change um so mm-hmm. i suppose from a kind of commercial and uh, sort of goals perspective um what are you hoping say in the uh, the next 12 months that obviously the brand change could potentially achieve in year one on. what sort of are we are we looking at here um i think we want to i mean it kind of coincides with um you know covid restrictions easing so we can actually get back out and promote a brand like we haven't been able to do for the last couple of years really because you know things like exhibitions and face-to-face um opportunities were were shut down so i think we can now you know in a post pandemic world hopefully um really start getting face to face with customers again and, and talking to people about our new brand of what we do um ultimately you know from a commercial perspective we want um to continue um increasing sales we've done year on year um really through the pandemic and uh, hopefully the 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 branding and the increased awareness to our customers will 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 boost that on further yeah, it's certainly encouraging as well that, you know, you persisted through the uh, the pandemic and um, overcome that challenge um, quite strongly. And I, I quite like what you say as well about the opportunity to now, you know, push the brand out now that social restrictions have been removed. Because um, I, I appreciate, of course, that uh, Boris Johnson's premiership is no more with the, uh, the new Prime Minister Liz Trust now having taken office. But he talked an awful lot during his premiership, didn't he, about sort of building back better from the pandemic, about renewal. And it seems as if um, as a business 
this move is all about that, isn't it? It's about renewal. It's about pushing the brand out there, and it's about really moving on after two tricky years, and hopefully, sort of more prolonged success even beyond then. Yeah, absolutely. And I think um, you know, there's been a lot of obviously political changes. There's been a pandemic. There's um, you know, energy crisis is is here, if not you know, worsening in the in the coming months. But um, I think if we can set ourselves up as uh, you know the the reliable brand, forward thinking, innovative brand that we are, it will set us in good stead in the future and, and moving into a post pandemic world and you know growing the business in in a marketplace that is changing, technology is constantly changing, and uh, we'll hopefully be able to be on the forefront of that. Yeah, certainly so. And uh, whilst, of course, you're looking to, um, of course, deliver on those ambitions, are there sort of any areas of policy coming out of the new government that you are going to be keeping a sort of key out, high out for that could either help or hinder you? Um, I certainly think, obviously, with a with large proportion of our um, customers being care homes, how that sector is going to cope in the coming months and years will be um an interest for us and, and what the government may or may not do to support that sector. Um, I think the energy crisis is, is going to hit that, that sector quite hard um, because they were hit hard, you know, um, in the pandemic, in, both in terms of their finances and their, um, you know, the health and well-being of staff and residents. Um, and as they recover financially from that, it, it remains to be seen how much, um, you know, effectively how much money they got in the pocket to cope with an energy crisis um, after the pandemic. And I think there could be some challenges ahead for that sector. And I'd, I'd certainly be interested to see how the government are going to respond to that or the new uh, new prime minister responds to that. Mm, yeah, and certainly hopefully Ecura will be in a position to sort of take those challenges in its stride. And I think you're very right. I mean, it's like there are some severe challenges um, on the horizon for the care sector in the form of, you know, the energy crisis. Um, Liz Truss has spoken very vocally as well about reversing the national insurance increase. So the way the sector is funded is also going to be of key importance. And also long-standing staffing and recruitment issues within the industry as well going to be very, very important to, uh, to try and resolve those in order for the industry to thrive and therefore to there to be a really strong marketplace for businesses such as your own um, but obviously as we start to see over the uh, the coming weeks and months how the government plans to address that um, maybe we can uh, review the situation again James and welcome you back onto the program and just um, have a little bit of a catch-up as to how the uh, the new brand is getting on yeah that'd be really that'd be really good yeah It'd be absolutely fantastic from my point of view, James. It's been uh, wonderful having you on the uh, the programme today as well to talk about the uh, the transition of direct healthcare solutions to eCure as well. And it's uh, certainly wish you all of the uh, the best of luck in the world with the uh, the rollout of that. And uh, by all means, uh, do take care and do stay safe with all that's uh, still going on in the world in the meantime as well. Thanks, Scott, and thanks again for for having me. And uh, yeah, look forward to catching up again in the future. Um, likewise James and to everybody tuning into the podcast today as well I do hope that you have thoroughly enjoyed the interview with James Pottick from uh, the newly anointed eCura today and um, if you are the head of an organisation of your own or a business leader yourself with your own story to come and share with us here at the Leaders Council then you too can also apply to be on our programme via leaderscouncil.co.uk forward slash apply um, for now I've been your host Scott Challoner on today's episode of the Leaders Council podcast please do take care all and goodbye <laughs>